What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Today on the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage, we will be looking at AMT's 1964 Oldsmobile 442 Hardtop Model Car Kit. So today I've put on my British Columbia Oldsmobile jacket from the 1990s to show you this amazing AMT 1964 Oldsmobile Cutlass Model Kit. So without further ado, let's take the lid off the box and check it out. Oldsmobile, where the action is. This AMT 1964 Oldsmobile 442 Cutlass Hardtop is a three-in-one model kit, which you can build stock, custom, or racing. It is made in 125th scale, and right here on the box is the custom version. Build this exciting, crowd-pleasing racing version on this side of the box, in which you can see the bubble hood, the mag wheels, and the exhaust dumps, as well as the awesome decal sheet, which is included in this kit. On this end of the box, you can actually see the stock version of the 64 Oldsmobile 442 Cutlass. And on this side, we can see many custom and racing parts, which are included. And the special feature is the double-sided pad printed tires with red line or gold Firestone Supreme. We get a new 442 engine block and air cleaner with the dual snorkels and the automatic transmission down here. You get the custom steering wheel, custom bucket seats, custom front end, custom air cleaner, roll bar, racing backlight straps, disc brakes, custom bumper, custom rear end, hood straps, Judson supercharger, optional jetway transmission, floor shift, a custom side pipes, and racing pipes. Before we show you all the plastic pieces, I like to show the instruction sheet because in that way I know what to expect when building this model kit, how it will all go together and what all the features are. Step one shows us how to build the engine and the first thing we have is the engine block with the transmission molded on the back says to cement the engine block halves together. Next up we add the oil pan to the block followed by the cylinder heads and then the intake manifold, the distributor coming up next and then we have the front timing chain cover as well as the alternator or the Delcotron which gets glued onto the belts of the fan belt pulleys. There's our fan belts there. The fan gets glued on and then we have our oil filter being glued on to the engine block. And then step number 11 is the valve covers which get glued on. Step number 12 is the carburetor to the intake manifold. And then for step 13 we have the starter which glues on to the engine block toward the back of the engine. Then you can add on your exhaust manifolds and then you have the option of either the custom air cleaner or the factory stock 442 special air cleaner with the dual snorkels. If you want a little more pep to your car and you're looking for the competition engine, here it is. First off, you want to cement the two engine block halves together with the automatic transmission, then add on your cylinder heads. Next is to add on this valve cover to this cylinder head then the distributor to the block. Next up we've got our Weber carburetors here on this side which you are gluing onto the intake manifold here. Then you've got your three-piece Judson supercharger being glued together. Over in step seven you glue on the opposite side Judson supercharger and glue that to your intake manifold. Then you're gluing your valve cover also to the cylinder head now these manifolds are going to be glued here. There's a little tab on the cylinder head which you can see over there. So they will glue down with the superchargers and everything all in place. And then over to step 9 which is the oil pan being glued to the engine block. Step 10 shows the water pump being glued to the block. Then we have our supercharger belt drive which gets glued into here. And you have to move this around so it matches up with the Judson superchargers up there and there. Step 12 is to glue the starter to the block. Then step 13 is gluing that oil filter to the block. And the final step is your exhaust manifolds right and left hand side, which will glue onto the bottom of these uh, cylinder heads. Then 
There is actually a fourth way to build this model car if you want to build an additional stock option. It says, special note, for those who want to build an original version of the F85 Cutlass hardtop, first remove the 442 badging from the body. Then use the original engine block, transmission, single snorkel air cleaner, and T-shifter parts as desired. These parts are included in the kit, but not shown on the instructions. If you want to know how to build that engine following the instructions, you will also need the Oldsmobile convertible kit, or check out our video of the unboxing up here. Our next step is the wheel and chassis assembly. So to begin with, we have this one-piece chassis, which is molded much like a promotional kit, almost like the AMT64 Chevy Impala. What we're going to do is we're going to take our assembled engine from the previous step and glue it to the chassis. There are some little locating tabs in here, which we'll see when we take a look at the actual plastic chassis part. Now we need our metal axles into the holes. There is the option of either the stock height or the lowered, it's your choice, and the option of adding in these disc brakes. Now the wheel has a little knob on the back, which is the part of the wheel hub, and that knob will go into the hole here. The hole is actually bigger than the knob so that the wheel will rotate, and the idea is to take the disc brake and glue it in here so that the disc brake doesn't rotate. The only thing that rotates is the actual wheel. So here we have the wheel back, the tires, which is your choice of either the Goodyear side or the Firestone gold letter side, and your option of the stock wheel or this two-piece aluminum custom wheel. Now let's move on to our interior assembly step. What we have here is a bucket or a tub style interior which has the rear seat, the floorboards, the center console and the side door panels molded as one piece which is quite a vintage way to do it. We have a clutch pedal being glued onto the floor for your standard transmission or remove it if you're doing an automatic. Here we have the stock bucket seats and we also have the option of the racing seats with the three-point seat belt harness. You have your choice of the AMC looking tri-spoke wheel or the stock two-spoke wheel. Then we have our stock dashboard as well as the option for the racing instrument panel which you would glue right in this area here. And then our stock floor shifter or the custom shifter. Those are your options. We also have the fire extinguisher and a roll cage for the racing edition. Next in the assembly process is step four, body. And what we have here is the body of our car turned upside down. And you can see all these mounting posts underneath as you turn it over, as well as this little tab sticking up here, which you also see on the stock hood and the racing hood. What they don't show anymore is in the old days, there used to be a metal clip that once you put the hood on your body, you would push this metal clip over top of this and this, and that would act as a hinge. And I can show you what it looks like in this next little illustration. So that's what it looks like. So now let's build this body and actually put it together. Step one, we have the radiator to the radiator wall. And step two is the battery to the radiator wall. Now I couldn't find step three on here because it's actually labeled as step five for the firewall and step five for the interior bucket. So I do believe that step three is actually the firewall. And this goes into locating slots, which are in here on the sides of the body, which you can't really see just the way this illustration is. Now step four is to take the glass component and to put it down here and glue on the rear view mirror up into the center of the windshield. Step five is cementing the interior into the body with the snap rings. One thing I will say to be careful of is you want to add a little glue here and here as well as on this tab and this tab and maybe a little bit up front. Do a little bit of a dry fit before you put the snap rings down just to see where this all contacts. One thing about the glue is you want to be careful not to add too much around here and here 
which is on these loops, because if you do, you can actually warp the body when the glue starts to dry. It won't warp the body, it'll make little sinkholes just underneath here and here. So be very sparing when you do that, or maybe even just snap it together and put the glue on the bottom of the snap rings, which might be a better, better way because then you're not getting the glue contact to the actual body, so there won't be any warpage there. That's just a tip and tech for free for you. So step six is choosing the hood. And again, you got your choice of either stock or racing. Now, because you're not using that metal clip that I showed earlier, maybe the, this isn't really a critical step because the hood is actually just going to be free floating. So then we have step seven, which is adding the mirror to the window. And that doesn't make any sense. I think this, uh, this numbering sequence is a little bit off kilter. Because if that was step seven, that would be the absolute last step. And how would you get this window into the windshield by slipping it through the side of the body? That would just drive me nuts. So actually it's good that I showed you this because you'd be a little bit confused when it came to the actual assembly. Next up, we get our final assemblies and we're gonna start with the stock build first. Parts are numbered in order of assembly. So first off, you wanna install the front and rear bumpers into the body. These are gonna hook into the posts, which are right there on that rad wall, as well as the ones into the back. This is ghosted out down here, the number, but it also refers to putting in that bumper first, which is crucial. Because next up, you're going to fasten the chassis to the body with the four mounting screws. You can align the holes on the chassis with the holes in the pegs by using one of these pointers, which is actually a cheap bamboo stick that I got at the dollar store. It just has a red end because I painted it that just to help with these videos. Next up, you want to cement the rear chrome trim into the body and then settle that all in with the taillights with these long pins, which will push through the hole here and the hole here. Again, alignment is crucial. Now, if you want to go outside of factory and get a really cool looking custom kit, here is the assembly steps for the custom itself. Number one, we start with the front and rear pans, which you're gonna to glue to the body. And here it is again. Step number two is to use those metal screws and align your chassis and your body and screw the screws up into the four posts. Next up, we have the custom lenses, which you're gonna glue on top of the headlights and then take that assembly and glue that into the grill. We also have these cool long bumpers and a screen insert or the license plate, which you can glue into the front pans once all this is put together. Step number six shows our custom taillights and the taillight housing, which all get glued up into the body. Also in the back, you can add in these pans and rear bumpers and your backup light and your license plate right there. And then you can glue on the outside exhaust to the body and you should have everything you need to make the custom version of this car. Now, if you dig the racing scene, you're really gonna love this build. So here we have our illustration again for the racing step. First thing is we're gonna add the backlight straps into the rear window. Second off, we'll add the hood straps onto the sides of our hood, then install the front bumper and rear bumper onto the body. Next up, we have this amazing little bug screen that goes over top of our front grille. This is transparent, and I don't know if you want to try to dry brush the edges of this. That's your choice. Now, once you get all this together, you want to line up these tubes with the holes on the chassis and then screw them in with the screw fasteners. Now, step number five was to glue that on. I got a little hit of myself. I just got excited. Step six, the rear chrome trim to the body and then the taillights. This is the same as the stock version, uh, only there is the extras of the racing pipes here. There's a left and right hand side, which you would glue onto the molded in exhaust pipes on the chassis. And finally, we have our fog lights and our driving lights. You get to add in the little uh, actual lens into the driving light and the fog lights, they are molded as one piece, and those will go up along the bumper and anywhere else in the front. Hey 
Here we have our plastic car body, and as you can see, it is quite nice. One thing I discovered is that back in the 60s, when this first came out, AMT actually made the convertible of this kit and never had a hardtop back in the day. At least I couldn't find one on Scalemates. So this entire hardtop roof is a new development from round two. Taking a look at the side profile, we have the right type of sculpturing up in here, the wonderful door handle, the cutlass emblem right down here, and the 442 on the fender. Now remember, if you want to build this as just a cutlass, you would carefully sign that off. And it is small enough that it would pretty much disappear. The back panel is quite nice. There's a little bit of flash up in here, but overall really wonderful looking. Up underneath we have the round two stamp in there, and there are mold marks in the four corners with a little bit of discoloration. That is from the mold release agent, I do believe. Hopefully you can uh, clean it out. There is a whole bunch of little bumps up along under here, if you can see that, which uh, I would sand down nice and smooth. And this little piece sticking up, I don't think it's supposed to be there, so I would remove it with a number 16 hobby blade. Up in the front, we've got our rad support with the little holes in there to mount the radiator up on the other side. And again, we've got the peg and post type of mounting under here, as well as little pegs in the back. There's quite a bit of uh, flash around here. Again, not too hard to clean up. And we do have our vent with the wipers molded in place. So again, really nice body for what we got in this kit. Next up, we have the interior bucket. And this is very nice once again. We have the side panels molded in place as well as the rear seat. Bringing this up to the camera, you can see just how wonderful this does look. There are some mold marks in the four corners, which will need to be cleaned up with your number 16 hobby blade. There we have our center console looking just like the Oldsmobile one. If you notice the picture that I had before, there is a tachometer in here that is not included in the kit. However, if you've built a lot of models, you know that you've got a ton of tachometers somewhere. There's our uh, brake pedal as well as the gas pedal. And we do have that extra pedal to glue in place here off the parts tree in order to make it a standard style of car with the clutch in. There's our side door panels molded in place. Unfortunately, by doing this, you limit the amount of detail you can throw in. Like for example, the window winding cranks should look like this, but you can barely even see them on those door panels. But, you know, if you're willing to either add some in or, you know, just ignore it, you're doing fine. On the back, there are no mold marks. So again, it is nice and even. Overall though, for a kit with the interior that was designed back in the 60s and then retooled for a modern age, I think this is quite nice. Next up, we get our chassis. Now this is from the top down and there are some mounting points here and here and here and here. For the engine, these are pegs so that the motor doesn't come in crooked or anything like that and helps align them. There are mold marks in here and I would try to remove them because they do sit up on mine anyway. They might on yours too and that will prevent anything from sticking up. A little bit of flash in on these back holes so just uh, clean all this area up, especially up into here. I don't know if you can see that too well. Now underneath you have your fuel cell and your rear axle as well as your exhaust and mufflers, the floor pan, the full perimeter frame, and our front lower A-arms and cross brace. Again, wonderful detail for a one-piece stamp chassis, but if you want to actually add in more like an independent, independent uh, mufflers and tailpipes as well as the rear axle, and all the rest, you will need to take it from another kit. Hopefully you can find one that fits. There should be a bar that comes across in the back here as part of the frame, but that's sort of eliminated because there's your mounting holes. But overall, again, it's very simplistic and quite nice for the kit. So here's a little dry fitting into how these parts will all go together. So you turn your body over, your completed interior will mount on these little posts in the back. Uh, one thing I forgot to show is the brace back here and that is of course for a firewall. You glue a bit in here and in here and then have it go across and then we have our chassis which will fit in and 
And there are these little steps if you look at the posts. Just a little bit here. Let's grab the stick. So you'll notice it's a little bit uh, stepped right in here. That's going to go into the holes on this side, and that helps with the alignment. Actually, those steps are for the bumpers. <laughs> so that will help with that. So you want to make sure you've got those holes aligned and see like my stick will fit in here. So I'd put that in and screw on the uh, screw in this side. Then I go into the back and do your opposite corners. So then put a screw in there or however the opposite is. I think, yeah. And align it that way. So you're going to go like a screw here, screw in the opposite corner, screw into this corner, screw into that corner. And uh, don't screw all the way down and try to get it tight on the first run. Screw down about halfway or so, then put in the other screw and screw about halfway. And just keep tightening it up until this thing all cinches together and you can't screw the screws in anymore. But overall you can see just how nice this does fit together. The uh, gap in here in the back is covered over with the rear window. Like in the convertible kit it had the boot. But overall I mean it will look really good once this is on your shelf. Just in the way of comparison, I thought I would show a top view of the Oldsmobile here. And this is the 1964 Mercury Comet. And uh, this just gives you sort of an idea of how similar in shape these cars were and in length and size overall. So the Cutlass is quite a small entry in the Oldsmobile line, almost in the same type of level as the Mercury Comet. Next up, we have two parts trees. Now this parts tree includes the stock engine with the automatic transmission, and this parts tree includes the four-speed transmission, the manual one, as well as the 442 air cleaner. So this is the engine you want to use in this kit if you want to build the full-out 442, and this is the one you would build if you wanted to build the automatic as a standard cutlass. So we have our right and left-hand side engine blocks, our air cleaners, our fan belt with the pulleys, oil pan, we have our Weber carbs right here, the four barrel carb, the distributor, the cylinder heads, the intake manifold, the fan, the front timing cover, as well as our exhaust manifolds. These are the manifolds for the supercharger. Then here we have our valve covers, our exhaust headers for the racing motor, then our oil filter, our starter motor, our battery, and the belts and pulleys for that racing motor again. So let's start with this. Again, there's some nice work in here. You can see the transmission, all the shift levers and everything up there for the standard, as well as the air cleaner is really nice on this kit. You could drill the snorkels with your, uh, with a hobby drill, basically, and uh, open them up a little bit. On the bottom side, we do have some mold marks in there, but those should be easily covered over since the engine is gonna be glued together. One thing, like my uncle was saying, is you can try this engine together for alignment with the pins, but if it doesn't seem to be aligned, cut the pins off, just quickly sand the bottom of this and this, and then add your glue on, and when you bring your engine together to glue it, you can align it back to front and up and down until everything lines up and looks perfect. So that's one way to get rid of any fit problems that are in there. Now let's take a look at the other parts tree. So here we have our automatic transmission, which looks correct for what an automatic looks like, as well as that nice air cleaner again, and again needs a little hole down the snorkel. There's our belts and pulleys, as well as the Weber carbs, the intake manifold, and our cylinder heads and oil pan, and then all the rest of the details over here, which are really quite nice. On this side there are some mold marks. You will have to get rid of this one on the timing cover because otherwise it will be sticking out of the engine just by that little bit. Same with your cylinder heads and all the rest. So again, keep all your parts clean and they will go together quite nicely. Our next parts tree includes the hood, the wheel backs, the retainer clips for the interior, as well as this roll bar there and there. There's the belts for the hood, and these are the rear braces for the window. And there is, spoiler alert, a spoiler in here. And this is actually loose in my version. So what I want to do is just bring in the back of the car and show you where it would position right there. 
which again looks quite nice and it would sit up more or less like that. So quite a cool little part on there. Now bringing this back up to the camera, there is the Oldsmobile lettering across the front of the hood. Turning it over, we've got the fireproof mat. We also have four mold marks in the corners here, which you can remove with your number 16 hobby blade. There are the little correct holes up underneath the hood, just like on the real car. And then our wheel backs on that side and the details in here, especially for those window straps. Again, really cool stuff from round two. And these will look good for your stock and racing version of the kit. Our next parts tree includes the dashboard and the stock steering wheel. This little bit down here is the pedal for gluing into the floor if you want to build the standard version. Here we have our front disc brakes with the calipers molded in place, the AMX type steering wheel, as well as the front and rear bumpers. These are the roll pan versions of the bumpers. They're not really bumpers, they're roll pans. <laughs> anyway. We have the nice dashboard with the instrument panels all down in here, the two-spoke wheel, and again, the nice three-spoke wheel with all the little holes in there. Really cool stuff. Uh, a little bit of discoloration on the plastic, again, possibly from mold release agent. I'm not too sure, but here it is, and you're going to love it. Here we have the body with the front roll pan. And I just want to show this to you because the roll pan is loose in my kit. Now, what you would do is bring your car up and you would glue the roll pan right into here. Just like so. You can see there is a bit of a gap around it. You will need to fill that gap. What I want to do in the future is make a little video series showing how these front pans glue on. Because there are a lot of these included in various model kits. And I'm not too sure how many people have actually shown how to do this. So it is quite simple. Uh, always difficult in the dry run. <laughs> but that's what the front pan would look like once you glue it in place. Again, not difficult to do, but the uh, fit and finish and how you apply the putty and all that, that is the real mastery in these parts. This parts tree includes the racing exhaust pipes, the firewall with the heater motor on it, as well as our brake system in there. We have our fire extinguisher and our three-piece racing harness, as well as the racing instrument panel and our radiator and these stock looking license plates. Okay, bringing this up to the camera, you can see there are some wires molded in place coming off the coil and all the rest. Again, really nicely done. Uh, very simplistic though. The detailing is kind of light. Well, not really light, just, I don't know. There's not like a whole ton of detailing on here, I guess. 1964 license plates on the back. There are some mold marks you'll have to deal with in order to get this all to fit nice and flat. But again, overall, I do like these parts. Here we have the parts trees that include our seats as well as our special racing hood. So looking at the seats, we have the stock seats here as well as the racing seats here. And then right here, our racing hood has louvers on it. It's got the four hood pins in each of the corners as well as the hood bulge and the removal of the Oldsmobile lettering up front. Now, if you wanted to build a NASCAR, you could use a stock hood and use those hood belts to hold that hood on because I think that's a little more accurate than using this in NASCAR. Now let's just move our racing hood out of the way and take a look at these seats. The front buckets are molded as one piece. There are some mold marks underneath, but I don't think those would interfere with anything. Texturing is on the back as well as on the front, and they do look quite sporty. And then over here, we've got our racing buckets. They do have these oval holes in here. You could try to open those up with a drill if you wanted. On the back, there are some very furious looking mold marks in there. You will need to either fill those or try to sand the back of the seat until the back of the seat is level with the bottom of the holes. I think I'd prefer to actually fill them. There we've got your mounting brackets for your seat for the racing one. Again, overall, these look quite nice. And looking at this hood up close, there's those nice louvers. Turning it over, you do have the fireproof mat and there are four mold marks in the corners, just like the stock hood. And the holes up front 
So again, you have to remove those mold marks with that number 16 hobby blade. But overall, once you do that, your model should look quite good once you paint it. Here we have our chrome trees, and AMT has given us two, which is really nice. We have the stock grill, headlights, and bumper, as well as the rear bumper, and one of the floor shifts up here. Now down here is the custom grill opening, as well as our racing grill. The difference between the stock and the racing is there is an air vent in here with a grill down below and it has the smoothed out headlight covers, whereas this one has the actual headlights molded in place. Both of them have the turn signal or parking lights up front. So just make sure that if you're doing the race one, it has the grill and the license plate housing and that the stock one, of course, doesn't have that. Now here we've got our nice mag wheels with the knockoffs. There's the fog lights in there. Or actually, the fog lights are somewhere else. <laughs> There's our stock wheels, and then our stock rear panel, and our stock bumper. Again, really, actually this is a custom bumper, pardon me. Or maybe the racing bumper. It's a spare bumper anyway, what's the difference between the two? Is there a difference? Yes, this one has backup lights. This one does not. So, I don't know if, if that's stock or not. Is there a version without the backup lights? There's the parts for our Judson blower or supercharger, as well as the wraparound chrome bumpers for the custom. There's the side pipes for the custom as well, and the back panel for the custom. A lot of good little parts on here. Again, really cool stuff. Oh, these are our lights, fog lights and whatnot. So again, nice, very nice. <laughs> there are some old marks back here you might have to take care of just uh, for fit and finish issues. Taking a look at the stock grill. Again, you can see those headlights in there and the rear bumper. Nice work. Those are the mounting holes for uh, screwing the, the front bumpers to your chassis. Overall, again, really nice chrome on here and will make your model look really, really good. Here we have the glass for our model kit. And unlike the convertible, what we have here is the front glass as well as the rear window with the two bars that connect them. Now, if you want to build this a little more like advanced, I would suggest cutting off the glass here and just around in here so that these bars aren't visible when you turn it over and look at the headliner. Now, this is the front grill I was talking about. Not really a grill, but a bug deflector or stone deflector, really. There's the backup light and our headlights for the, the custom version, as well as the lights for the rally version. And then we have our rear custom tail lamps and the stock tail lamps. So just bringing all these up to the camera, you can see our glass is nice and clean. AMT did put it in a bag in the model so that it wouldn't actually get scratched by the other components. There's that nice bug deflector grill or the stone guard grill. Uh, you could actually very carefully dry brush this, although um, I don't know what the results would be if you'd actually end up filling it in. It is quite a quite a tight weave in there. There's a backup light with some bars in it, our front headlight covers, and then we've got these lamps as well. One's for the fog lights and one for the rally lights. And then looking at the back, just some nice clear red strips for the tail lamps for the custom and for the stock we have the pins on the back because again these have to go through the molding as well as through the body overall though the detail on these is quite nice for such small parts and they will look great in your model here we have our tires as well as the metal axles and the screws now amt has put them in a bag and they've sealed it here and at this angle so what i'll do is i will leave the screws and the axles in the bag just so i don't lose them but i will open up these tires and we'll take a look at those now these tires are quite wonderful on one side you have these nice pad printed white walls and by turning them over you can also read Firestone Supreme in gold lettering and see the little Firestone emblem. AMT has done a really awesome job on pad printing these. As you can see the gold there 
and that wonderful white wall. The side tread pattern looks accurate to the old Firestone tires, and the tread itself wraps around the wheel this way, which is quite typical of the tire pattern designs back in the day. So again, really wonderful tires made by AMT, and it's nice to see them updated. Here we have our decal sheet for our Oldsmobile with a lot of really cool decals on here that you don't usually see a lot of the different sponsors, especially like Shell, Castrol, Pirelli, and uh, here Potvin Racing Cams. Auto World, of course, is Round 2's special website. You've got American Grand Prix for a license plate, Competition Proven. Again, really cool stuff. It looks like... Uh, Holman Moody as well, and then of course Moon and Auto Light. You also have your choice of the two air cleaner decals, which you can also use on the other Oldsmobile kit, the convertible. The Auto Light spark plugs, again, quite a difference from Champion. And these are really cool 1964 Rally Monte Carlo, and they even have the numbers. So check out Monte Carlo Racing from 1964 just to see where these decals apply. There's also the AMT uh, Motorsports Club decal down here. There's our dash panel if you don't want to paint it. You can actually use this one instead. You have Auto World 1964 license plate, 442 license plate. Now this one you could use on many different cars. There of course is Mobile One again, the little horse. The Auto Club, you get your choice of number 21 or number seven or use other numbers from different decal sheets. And then we have an Arizona 1964 Olds 442 license plate. So again, really nice work on this. You also have a racing class AM and Firestone tires and this wonderful blue racing stripe. Now, if you turn your decal sheet over, you actually get a nice illustration of where to place the decals. So we have our racing number going on the door, sponsorship going up on the front fender, and maybe along the back you want that as well. But the most important part is the stripe and to figure out where to cut it for the trunk lid, the roof, and the hood. And again, you get your decal application over here. The only downside of this is, of course, if you've got this on this side and you want to cut out this nice number seven or something like that, once it's cut out, you cut out a piece in here. So as a suggestion, maybe maybe scan this in your computer first or something, just so you know that you can look at this at any time without it being all cut up. Well, I hope you enjoyed that look at the AMT 1964 Oldsmobile 442 Cutlass Hardtop Coupe, which is available now at www.monster-hobbies.ca for a limited time only. And if you enjoy watching these unboxing videos, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below this video. What is subscription to the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage channel? Well, it's absolutely free. And what it does, if you click the subscribe button and that notification bell is for free, lets you see the next video that I make and lets you know when it comes out. So if you enjoyed that, don't forget to subscribe. Also, a like would be good by hitting that thumbs up button. You help more people see this great video as well as others on my channel. So until next time, everybody, have a great day. Happy model building, and we'll see you in the next video.